TGR. For 32 million people, the Switch is the must-have handheld slash console of this generation. Honestly, it's rightfully so, especially if you're a Nintendo fan. There's so many of the games that are out there and so many things that you can do with the Switch. But one of the niftiest features is that you can go ahead and, and take your Switch on the go and have two handheld controllers with you. So that if you run into a friend or run into whoever you want to play with, you have that extra Joy-Con to play with that additional person. Now, me in my condition, I go ahead and I travel for work during the summer. So having a console this powerful on the go was almost a no brainer. Uh, two years ago when the Nintendo Switch originally launched, I went ahead and I went to Toys R Us when Toys R Us was still open and I purchased a console and I took it with me overseas and I played Zelda and I played the heck out of Breath of the Wild. I loved every second of it. But that being said, I went ahead and I purchased a couple of other games. Um, one of them was Mario Kart 8. And I realized that in order for me to actually enjoy this game and play it to its fullest potential, I needed another pair of Joy-Cons. So when I landed in Europe, I went to the equivalent of uh, Best Buy in America. It's called Saturn. And I went ahead and I purchased two Joy-Cons. Um, and they're red and blue. And I fell in love with it. Honestly, we, we, it captured a little bit of the Wii era of family gaming magic that we saw um, and something that was lost a little bit in the Wii U era. It was just an easy way for family members to get into gaming and Mario Kart 8 was a phenomenal way of doing it. So I was a little bit skeptical with the Nintendo Switch when it initially launched. These Joy-Cons felt light. It felt like I could throw it and I could just break it. They, they just felt very fragile. Now, um, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a bit, you know that I have a kid and my kid would go ahead, he's three, he take these Joy-Cons and pretty much tear them apart. He'd throw them, he'd, we'd build Nintendo Labo things together and he would go ahead and kind of like put it in, throw it out and mess things up. But honest to God, these Joy-Cons have held up. The original ones that I have and these uh, held up pretty well. But something that I noticed a few months ago was that the joysticks started moving around uh, and uh, in the sense that there was ghost inputs or um, uh, a little bit of a Joy-Con drifting within the analog sticks. So um, what that means is that it was registering uh, inputs into the actual joystick itself that I did not put in. So if I was playing uh, Zelda in this example, the camera would go ahead and start going up and down, left and right without me actually pushing that or putting that into the Joy-Con. Now, as a gamer, that's something that is both frustrating um, but also annoying. Um, having to go out there and purchase another set of Joy-Cons for $80 and this being an issue that Nintendo is aware of um, is very, very frustrating. I am a tinker. I built the computer that I added on. I love to go ahead and kind of take things apart, figure out how they work and put them back together. So I immediately thought, you know what? Let me see if I can fix this. So I did a little bit of research. A lot of people on the internet, they have had this issue happen to their Joy-Cons in the past and there are solutions that are out there. Um, I was posting on the communities tab for the channel and I believe his name is Titus Wang. He went ahead and uh, Posted a couple of comments, wanted to know a little bit more information. So um, here's something that I found out that worked for me. So there's four things that people can do. The first thing, which I believe is actually pretty simple and pretty easy, is to actually just go ahead and update the firmware within your Joy-Con. So you go into the settings and you go ahead and you can update the firmware uh, via an internet, internet download. That being said, uh, that didn't fix the situation for me. Uh, by golly, you know, who would have thought? But uh, the next thing after that is to actually calibrate your analog sticks. And it's similar to calibrating the screen on the 3DS. You kind of just go ahead and move up, down, left, right, and circle, it or, uh, circle the uh, analog stick around. Um, but it's a similar fashion, more or less. The concept is the same. That didn't work for me either. So the next thing that popped up was um, actually having a contact cleaner. So contact cleaner is actually a quick drying formula that is used to um, clean uh, electrical components. 
And what that does is it prevents any sort of corrosion or um, anything that would go ahead and hinder the input that you're putting in. Uh, if you have a pair of tweezers, you can go ahead and you can actually lift up a silicone flap and expose uh, the white part underneath the um, actual analog stick. There's a little white ball that's there. You put in a little bit of contact cleaner into that little ball and let it dry. Now, forewarning, um, I would make sure that your Joy-Con is completely dead before you do that, um, unless you're like me and you want to be risky and you just want to go ahead and go for it. That being said, if you are going to do that without killing your battery, make sure that you don't press any of the buttons because if you do that, there's a little uh, electrical current that goes through uh, with the battery that's built in. Now, um, I know that this is a quick drying formula. I waited uh, the entire night, so I did it right before I went to bed and I just waited all night, slept through the night, and I woke up the next day to try it. The first night that I did this, that I actually sprayed the Joy, um, the Joy Cons with the contact cleaner, um, it didn't work. So uh, the second night, you know, I lifted up the flap, sprayed it in there, moved the analog stick around just to make sure the contact cleaner got in. I let it dry. The following morning, it worked 100% fine. I didn't have any issues and it worked just fine for me. Um, now, if this doesn't work for you, then you might actually just have a completely um, dead Joy-Con or a Joy-Con uh, joystick that is about to die totally normal and understandable, um, somewhat frustrating that the life cycle would only be two years, but so on and so forth. That is a topic for a, a different discussion. Um, so what you can do is on Amazon, of all places, they sell kits where you can go ahead and get the tri-wing screwdriver that's needed to take out the tri-wing screws uh, on the back plate and um, a similarly sized Phillips screwdriver because once you take this off, everything inside is Phillips uh, to go ahead and take apart the entire Joy-Con and then uh, put in a new joystick. It's connected by a, uh, a ribbon wire to the circuit board. So once you remove that, you can go ahead and um, just plug in a new, uh, new joystick, make sure that everything works and that you're actually receiving an input um, and then put it back together and boom. Uh, that kit costs $14.99 if I remember correctly with Prime Shipping. And honestly, $14.99 sounds a lot better than $80. So um, especially if it only takes about 30 minutes for you to do if you're really good and handy with things like that. Now, I personally would always recommend to just go ahead and go with the contact cleaner. Um, the This one is CRC's QD contact cleaner, but I know WD-40, they have a contact cleaner either at Home Depot or uh, Lowe's. And it's even on Amazon, I think it's like six or seven dollars for the can. So it's not that expensive and it does the job and you can use that to clean any sort of electrical uh, circuit board or anything like that. Now, I went a little bit overboard um, and I bought a precision screwdriver kit. Uh, this one's $14.99 online, but um, you only need one uh, bit head in order to actually remove the um, the back plate but you can use this for all sorts of things you can use it to open your uh, ps4 dualshock 4s you can use this on the xbox one you can pretty much use it for anything so the uh, possibilities are endless um, and if you like to be handy uh, it is there um, and I'll, I'll set up links in the description below that way you guys can see everything that i'm talking about and you can see it online and purchase it for yourself if you need to so what do you guys think? Is this something that you've experienced yourself uh, firsthand or have one of your friends experienced this? Um, are there any sort of solutions that are that I'm not aware of that I may not have tried? Because honestly, if one of my Joy-Cons failed, I'm pretty sure the next one's gonna fail shortly afterwards. Um, let us know in the comments below. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and share it with one of your friends. I mean, if there's somebody that you know that's having a similar situation or having some of their Joy-Cons stripped, let them know this might be a helpful video for them. But um, until next time, everybody, deuces. Like what you saw? Check out some of our other videos. Be sure to click the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for your support, and thanks for watching.